Hello and welcome everyone. In this video, we'll be discussing about shell scripting. So by the end of this video, students will be able to execute basic shell scripts uh, by using uh, the basic Unix environment. So here is the outline of this video. Basically, we'll be going through what is shell scripting and a couple of definitions, and this will be followed by uh, uh, examples. So it would be a good time now to uh, recall what is uh, meant by a simple computer program. So as we all are aware that uh, generally a computer program is nothing but uh, a set of code or a piece of code written in any programming language like either a C program or Java or Python, uh, which is later on converted into a machine code by using some sort of com compilers and interpreters. And it looks something like this. Uh, as you're able to see on the screen. So generally the computer asks you, uh, tell me what to do. And then whatever program that you might have written and later on converted into a machine code in the form of ones and zeros, that is transferred onto your machine uh, in a language where your computers can understand. And then the computer decides like what, what, what is to be done. So with this perspective kept in mind, it is going to become very much easy for us to discuss uh, what is the shell scripting. So before uh, entering into the details, let us have a look at a simple program, uh, a simple C program which prints hello world to the screen. So this is how a simple C program looks, which is converted into this one zero machine code by the help of compiler or interpreter. And then that is transferred onto the machine and then machine is capable to understand what, what are the jobs that it is uh, assigned and what needs to be done in the form of a desired task. Well, let us get started with the basic block diagram of Unix system. So as you're able to see on the screen, uh, basically we have hardware here. The PC or the computer or the CPU, which we have seen earlier in the previous slide, is going to rely somewhere here under the hardware block, which is uh, overlapped by something known as a kernel. So kernel is nothing but the core uh, of this particular, uh, what we can call an operating system. So hardware is overlapped by a kernel. So this kernel is nothing but a sort of software layer which is installed onto your hardware and which is then uh, controlled by another layer called shell. So as you can see, there are a variety of shell available in the uh, Unix environment. So we will be generally calling it a shell. So shell will be acting as a bridge between the outer application layer and the inner hardware layer. So this is the drop structure, like we have level number one, two, three, and four. So level number one is the core hardware, like maybe a CPU or some sort of uh, uh, PC on which we are installing an operating system. So the operating system has kernel, which has a direct linkage with the hardware. And then this kernel can be uh, communicating with uh, applications like either a, uh, maybe of a Gmail or it could be an FTP server or it could be any uh, Word or a text editor. So these text editors are nothing but those are the application layers which uh, uh, which can be generally accessed by the users. So keeping this architecture or so-called the block diagram of a Unix operating system, uh, we will proceed ahead and look at uh, the various types of shell scripting. So what is shell scripting? Shell scripting is basically uh, a computer program designed to be run by Linux-based systems, which could be of one of the four types of shells. The first one is bone shell, the second one is C shell, third one is a corn shell, and the last one is a GNU bone again shell. So depending upon what kind of uh, command line interface you're using and what kind of operating system you're using, it depends like which shell is uh, going to be native to that particular operating system. So the things will become more clear when we get into the dem demonstration. So here are the four basic components. So here are the basic components of a shell scripting example. So as you can see, the first line is generally known as a shebang, which always starts with a hash sign followed by an exclamatory and then the path to that particular shell. So here we have the first slash after that hash and exclamatory. The first slash actually represents the root folder of a Linux operating system or so called the kernel, uh, which we have seen in the block diagram. Then under bin folder, we have the type of the shell. So if we are using uh, a corn shell, probably this would have been like KSH. So currently this is a sort of uh, general bone shell. So because of which we have considered writing SH here. 
So this is the first shebang code, uh, which uh, forms the first line of every shell scripting program. Now, next to that, we have a couple of uh, Linux commands uh, where uh, the first line is actually trying to remove uh, forcefully with a argument called minus F, uh, a kind of uh, folder, I mean a kind of a file called slash temp slash listing dot temp. So it is simply trying to forcefully remove uh, this particular path by pushing it to some other uh, position. So similarly, uh, touch is another command which uh, generates or creates a text file or simply a file. So uh, currently under temp folder, a file named listing.temp is created with the help of a command called touch. So you can simply write the list of commands which gender your Linux uh, terminal supports. So as we have already seen, a shell script is nothing but a list of uh, programs. The reason why we have discussed about C program earlier is that even a C program looks like this. Like you define a couple of header files, then you include some of the variables and then you do uh, some stuff which is going to print something to the screen. So depending upon all these things, we decide uh, what commands needs to be done. So it's a sort of automation in uh, Linux operating system. So uh, removing a file, deleting a file, or maybe creating some thousand files or maybe uh, searching for a single variable or a command in a given list of uh, uh, complete folder which contains some thousands of files. So all these kind of activities which can't be done through the UI interface uh, is simplified. So generally shell scripts are used for automating some complex jobs or some repetitive jobs, uh, which is an important aspect. The second part is where uh, whenever you want to comment a certain line in a shell scripting program, you need to write a hash. So it's a very simple uh, thing. So whenever you are about to uh, write or make your program a little bit more uh, simpler or complex, then you generally try to uh, add some sort of comments to your program just to make it more readable. So similarly, uh, uh, similar to your C, C++, Java, HTML, and other programs, even shell scripting supports commenting certain lines uh, for proper readability of the code. So along with that, uh, whatever commands you want to put, that can be simply be uh, listed in your shell scripting file. And then uh, you can name it with a name called some file name dot sh. So here the name extension for your shell command uh, or the shell file needs to be dot sh. So here I have logged in into the Ubuntu operating system. Uh, as of uh, making this video, I'm using 18.04 Ubuntu version. And the first task that generally we need to perform uh, before executing any sort of shell script is uh, just go to terminal and open it. So the window which you're able to see here is referred as terminal in Linux operating system. So I'll maximize this, okay. So, so here what you're able to see is that I have logged in with the username called root1 and the name of the operating system that was given at the time of installation was Ubuntu. So let me first of all introduce you with a couple of basic tasks that we need to generally perform whenever you are about to uh, work with uh, a Linux environment. So the first task is uh, when you're not sure that uh, admin password is not set. So this is something like you are uh, just a guest appearing uh, in so this is like uh, you generally log in by default with the help of a guest privilege. And whenever you want to change some sort of uh, system roles or maybe uh, some sort of maybe changing the time or you want to get a uh, very good access to the internal kernel related operating systems or maybe if you want to access the system files, it is mandatory that you need to have some root access. So to gain the root access, the command that we use is su but uh, if you have a root password which is already set, then you can directly hit this command called su, uh, which stands for super user, and then it will prompt for a password, then whichever is applicable that you are supposed to type. And then as you can see on the screen, I have currently access as a root of my operating system. And currently I am in home slash root one. So in case if, uh, I'm not having, or 
in case if I didn't set any root password, then the command that I need to set is sudo pass wd. It stands for um, setting up a root password. So it will prompt me to enter the guest password. Then it, uh, currently it is asking me to enter some new password for uh, admin. So I'm typing it twice. It will definitely go for uh, confirmation. Now let me check whether it is updated or not. I'm typing my new password. And yes, I have successfully logged in as root. Here are the references uh, used for this particular video. Thank you.